name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And we gather together on this Sunday morning to celebrate our Sunday Mass, but also to celebrate the life of Barney Larkin, whose funeral Mass we celebrate. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit, Lord of mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner, Christ of mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God of mercy in us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now we'll all be seated and we listen to the word of God proclaimed in the readings by Leona and Geraldine. A reading from the letter of the prophet Isaiah. Let me sing to my friends the song of the love of my vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug the soil, he cleared it up with stones. He planted choice vines in it. In the middle, he built a tower. He dug a press there too. He expected it to yield grapes, but sour grapes were all that it gave. Now all the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the men of Jewett, I ask you to judge between my vineyard and me. What could I have done for my vineyard that I have not done? I expected it to yield grapes. Why did it yield sour grapes instead? Very well, I will tell you. What I am going to do to my vineyard, I will take away the hedge for it to gaze on. I'll knock down its walls for it to be trampled on. I will lay its waste unpruned, undug, overgrown to burr and its thorns. I will command the clouds to rain no rain on it. Yes, the vineyard of the Lord of the hosts is the house of Israel and the men of Jewett that chosen plant. He expected justice, but found bloodshed, integrity, but only a cry of distress. The word of the Lord. And I will trust in 
to the Philippians. There's no need to worry, but if there is anything you need, pray for it, asking God for it with prayer and thanksgiving, and the peace of God, which is so much greater than we can understand, will guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, fill your minds with everything that is true, everything that is noble, everything that is good and pure, everything that we love and honour, and everything that can be thought virtuous or worthy of praise. Keep doing all the things that you have learned from me and have been taught by me and have heard or seen that I do. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thank you be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Listen to another parable. There was a man, a landowner, who planted a vineyard. He fenced it round, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went abroad. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his servants, thrashed one, killed another, and stoned a third. Next he sent some more servants, this time a larger number, and they dealt with them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. 
Well, when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir, come on, let us kill him and take over his inheritance. So they seized him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They answered, he will bring those wretches to a wretched end and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will deliver the produce to him when the season arrives. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures it was the stone rejected by the builders that became the keystone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. I tell you then, that the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Now you may be seated for a few moments. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Barney Larkin was a ported down man through and through, a man of the tunnel. As a boy, he worked alongside his father, Leo, and had a great love of horses. As a young man, Barney was very sociable and loved to dance, and he lived life to the full. His wife, Georgina, who passed away just a couple of years ago, was the love of Barney's life, and she was his rock. And when she died, part of Barney died too. He was heartbroken. He pined away since then. Barney was a great provider in his day. He worked hard to make sure that his family had plenty of good food on the table and fine clothes on their back. He loved his work and as for home life, he and Georgina made a great team. In recent years, apart from the loss of Georgina, Barney was afflicted with dementia and though his short-term memory was failing he still managed to be in good spirits, so that was his nature. Barney was fortunate to be well cared for by his daughter Trina, of whom the rest of the family are extremely grateful and proud. Many people devour the newspapers every day. I quit doing that many years ago because they put me in bad form for the rest of the day. The sports pages occasionally would be enough for me. And I suspect Barney would only have been interested in the racing pages. But St. Paul tells us in that second reading that instead of filling our minds with all kinds of negativity, we should fill our minds with everything that is true, everything that is noble, everything that is good and pure, everything that we love and honor, everything that can be thought virtuous and worthy of praise. The power of positive thinking is well known and Barney by his nature thought positively. Of course, we have to put our positive thoughts into action. As St. Paul says again in that reading, keep doing the things you have learned from me. And whatever was the secret of Barney's happiness, we could all do with a bit of it. If we do what we can and put our trust in God, then St. Paul assures us that the peace of God, which is so much greater than we can understand, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Peace comes not from having an easy or tranquil life. We can have peace even in the midst of struggle and turmoil, provided 
that we are on the side of right. And Barney was certainly on the side of right. And then the God of peace will be with us. That's our assurance. I extend my sympathy and that of Canon Toner to Martin, Trina, Anne, Barney, Leona, Leo, James, Julie, Jolene and Eamon, to his daughters-in-law and sons-in-law, and to his grandchildren, and most recently, a great-grandchild. May Barney rest in peace. We stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his, own, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again and from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now the, the prayers of the faith will, will be led for us by Charlie and Eamon. God, the Almighty Father, raise Christ his Son from the dead. With confidence we ask him to save all his people both living and dead. For Barney, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, Lord hear us. For Barney, who was nourished at the table of the Lord when he received the body of Christ, welcome him into the halls of your heavenly banquet, Lord, hear us. For all whom we have loved and who have gone before us in faith, especially about mummy, may we look forward to the day we are gathered together in heaven. Lord, hear us. For the Lord and family, relatives and friends, men and know the consolations of Mary, your mother, who stood at the cross, as her own son was dying, Lord, hear us. For the love and support cared for Barney over the years, we give thanks to you, my Cap and Trina Lord, and Lord hear us. For the for all of us who gathered to you today and faith today, may we reunite our loved ones. Lord And we pray for all the other recently deceased, Gerard Parker, Sister Dorothy Bennett, Terry Liggett, Nancy Morgan, Raimundo Pedro de Silva, May Farquhar Lee Mackle of Lurgan, formerly Ported Down, Brandon McCourt of New Jersey, formerly Ported Down, Brian Hughes. At this time, we remember Annie McStravick. Yesterday, the, uh, the first anniversary of Annette Green, the month's mind of Alice McShane, and the anniversaries of Kathleen McAlinden, deceased members of the McAlinden family, and Eamon Keegan. And today the, is the first anniversary of Desi Harney, the month's mind of Antonio Verandas, and the anniversaries of Jim Griffin, Anne McGarrity, Paddy Connolly, and Annie Holland. And also we pray for Rose Keegan, late of Ballyorn Park, who died yesterday. A private funeral will take place with Requiem Mass being celebrated at a later date. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen and love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters, 
cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you, <coughs> for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You form man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought you for consecration, that they may become 
the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. Sorry, I thought there was something wrong. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed us to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, our venerable spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, and Eamon our Bishop, his assistant Bishop Michael, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Barney, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters, too, and to all who are pleasing to us are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Please bear with me as I remind you again of instructions for the distribution of Holy Communion in order to manage the traffic flow uh, properly. I will begin to distribute to those on my right hand middle line here. And when I have finished, I will then distribute Communion to those sitting at my left hand middle line. So if the people in this aisle could just stay seated until we've dealt with the other side. And you're asked to come up row by row, beginning from the front, walking back, coming up the middle aisle, and after receiving communion, return to your seat by the respective side aisles. Meanwhile, the minister of the Eucharist will begin over here to distribute communion at the station of the cross side. Those sitting at that side are asked to leave the seat you are sitting in to the left hand side, coming up the aisle and returning to your seat by the station to the cross. And when he's finished there, he will distribute to the, those on the choir side who are asked to leave the seat you are sitting in, coming up to the right hand side up the aisle and returning to your seat, passing by the icon and the candelabra. And take your time and please come up row by row, beginning from the front and walking back. As I say, no hurry on us. Please remain patient and uh, give us all a bit of space. <laughs>
Thank mm-hmm. you.
man was dying, and when he realized that he saw God coming closer with a suitcase in his hand, God said, all right, my friend, it's time to go. Surprised, the man asked, now, so soon, I had a lot of plans. I'm sorry, but it's time to go, God insisted. What do you have in that suitcase, the man asked. God answered, your belongings. My belongings? You mean my things, my clothes, and my money? God answered, those things were never your, were not yours. They belonged to the earth. Is it my memories? The man asked. Those never belong to you. They belong to me and to the circumstances. God said, is it my body? God answered, that was never yours. It belonged to the creation. Is it my soul? No, that is mine, God replied with great patience. The man took the suitcase from God and opened it, only to open it to discover it was empty. Utterly shocked and in great distress, the man said, I never had anything. That is correct, said God. Only the moment you lived was yours. Enjoy life and what you have, but never forget you cannot take anything with you. Amen. Thank you, Anne. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume, through Christ our Lord. Let us bless the Lord. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ which conquers all things destroys even death itself. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid, hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Barney in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our brother forever. Amen. Now, just before we finish, I'd like to remind you all that uh, owing to current circumstances, um, 
it'd be family only in the graveyard for the burial. Anyway, it'll spare you uh, a, a drenching. Um, I didn't realize that the French were so fond of their snooker that the name a hurricane, Alex, there you go. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. Sings my 